Uh, look, over here on this website, I really want to communicate with y'all. So I'm going to do these videos, but I really want you to type questions and back and forth. This is uh, uh, the reason why I did this is so that we can really talk together, that I can really get into it with you. So please write below um, any thoughts that you have, any questions that you have about what I have to say. So after my long description of my NDE, what I want to do now is very quickly or not so quickly, let's go into what we're, what's our goal. Our goal here is 5D. That's what our goal is. So what does 5D look like? Well, 5D is not everything perfect, but it is vibrationally a very significant step. Now, it is a gradual thing from 4D to 5D, so you're going to see gradual changes. But when you f actually get firmly into 5D, then vibrationally, you're much higher than you were whenever you started this life in the lower vibrations of 3D, okay? So there are certain things that absolutely have to go. And fear is one of them. Fear is a very low vibration. Hello, kitty kitty. Do you agree? Do you agree that fear must go? Y'all want to see Piota? This is Piota. And Piota knows 5D very well, which is the reason why she came walking over here to talk to y'all. Because she, I don't know if you can see this, but she has one green eye and one blue eye. And whenever we got her, they told her, they told us that she was blind. She's not blind, but half of her life is, uh, she lives in 5D. She plays with fairies a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. Okay, so back to 5D. Fear must go. So anything fear related, I mean truly fear related, will not be here anymore. So whenever you're working towards 5D, that's something that you can really look at your life and analyze, really watch for. And I don't mean just your classic um, fear of somebody attacking you or um, you losing your home or I, I mean fear on all forms. Uh, simple worry. Worrying is fear. That will be gone. So, as you know, you have to be in that state before you get to 5D, so that's what you need to practice. Yet, as you're being happier and happier, of course, there's no room for fear. Now, for me, with my history, with my traumatic history, this has been, has taken a great deal of my time to do, because I have spent, uh, I've had so much trauma in my life that I collect data to try to avoid more trauma, and that is all, of course, fear-based. So I, I must get rid of that. So I work on that a lot. It's a lot better than what it was. So just be conscious. Remember that in this process, your number one job is being on top of how you feel at all times. Not your emotional state, but your actually moment-to-moment -moment feeling. Because your feeling will tell you where you are in this game and where you are vibrationally and where you are dimensionally, okay? So your number one job is to keep on top of how you're feeling. Don't judge it. Don't worry about it. Just be on top of it. If you worry about what your feelings are, well, then you're worrying, and that's, that's fear. <laughs> and the dogs are jumping in here, too, okay? All righty, then. So... You just need to live your life, but be aware. Always touch and base with yourself. Okay, how do I feel? How am I feeling? How am I feeling? Okay. <coughs> Stephanie, you want to come get your boss dog over here? Okay, so you've got to be on top of how you're feeling and then be willing and ready to correct it instantly. Remember, I've given you the keys on what I use. Now, you don't have to use these. You can use anything you'd like, but this is what I do. And I've done it uh, very quickly. I think I learned within six months this, this plan of action. Because when I came back, it was very, very important to me. I knew the difference between the, the um, higher dimensional living feeling what that felt like and what it felt like here. And I wanted that other side. I wanted that release, that relief. So what I do is 
I have got a memories. I've got memories that are so high vibrational. They feel so good that nothing can touch them. And they instantly change my, um, how I'm feeling. And one of those was holding my children for the first time. And, uh, Really, whenever I was really conscious that they were my children, not immediately after the birth, it took a little bit longer than that. But when I first had the child in my arms and understood that they were my child and I was responsible for them and they were from me, that moment, there's a moment where there's just a few moments. If I stay in that memory too long, it becomes fear. Because I'm going, am I going to do it right? Am I going to mess it up? Oh, this is a lot of responsibility. So I don't want to go down that road. No, I want to stay in those first couple seconds, that weight of that child, the smell of that child, the look in their eyes when I held them and, and comprehended that deep, unconditional love. In that moment, I, I go to that moment. Okay. Now, if that doesn't snap me out of my not happier feelings... Then I go to my second round. My second round are, is music. And I have music that has been lined up on the phone and on my laptop that is meant to make me feel good. Now these songs last two to three minutes. I will do one of these songs and then I will assess, do I feel better? Can I move through my life now? If it, does, if it didn't do it, I listen to another song. If a couple, two, three songs doesn't bring me out of it and put me in a happier mood, then I go to my third choice, and that is a happy movie. And I've got happy movies that will last an hour and a half that will bring me out of it. And they're my particular movies. You have to watch the movies because you don't want uh, a movie that is like a, a comedy, but it's making fun of people. You don't want that. Now, for me, I've got music and lyrics. Um, I've got August Rush, uh, Hairspray, uh, High School Musicals. Um, what else are my... Oh, she's busy. She has her headphones on. Anyway, I've, I've got oh, a, about 20 of them. And I'll watch one of those movies. And when after the movie is done... Almost always, I'm in a better mood and can move through life in a happier state. Now, I also can use for, if I, if I feel like I'm going to be struggling having my happier and happier day, then I will use things like um, essences, you know, oils, and, and put it in my little, my little uh, necklace. That little necklace, and you open it up, and you can put, uh, and it you can put different uh, oils in there, and it works for aromatherapy because it's right here close to me, and it goes up here, and I can smell it, so I can use that. I uh, use candles a lot, like candles. Um, walking in nature, of course, is go to always, always. You can you can walk in nature uh, if you can if you have access to nature. That's a good one. But whatever it takes, the, the point here is that you have to be on top and be honest about how you're feeling all the time, okay? Now, if you're kind of the kind of person who has, in the past, tried to figure out why you're feeling the way you're doing, you're feeling, I would suggest that you break that habit, okay? After you are happier and happier, and it is very natural for you to correct into happier and to stay in a happier state of mind, then you'll, you might have some time to try to figure out why you've been unhappy. But to go back into time and look at what has caused you to be unhappy, in my opinion, is a dangerous mood, move. And I, I've done it. I spent a lot of time doing it. And I, I think that it is very dangerous because to go back in that situation, if you're not very careful about staying objective, it's very easy to get pulled into the situation, relive it, and lower your vibrations in, the, in, in that reliving. I think it's very, very dangerous. I don't really see the point. 
as you guys know, the past is the past, the future has not been, all we've got is the now. And so the now is what I want you to really work at, at concentrating on. I know you, you have lives and you have to think about the past and the future, but try to go there, deal with it in the way that you have to deal with it in order to live a human life and then get out of it as quickly as possible, okay? When you die, you will know all about how the history of the planet Earth. You'll know it instantly. You'll know how humans were created. You'll know what happened on the planet Earth, uh, all of the stages during all of the time. You'll know all of that instantly. And really, is it that important that you need to figure it out now? Because right now, you kind of got your hands full. This is tricky. It's tricky to go from lower vibrations, 3D, to where we want to go, which is at the very least, lowest vibrations in 5D and hopefully a little bit further. Okay? All right. So what has happened is your, you, your head, you have a human brain, and that human brain is very small in the, in the scheme of things. It's very, very small. It, it won't, will only hold so much data. Okay? So... So what has happened is as you've been raised, you have been taught a lot of things. So your head is full of a lot of belief systems and it's busy. You have to exist day to day. You have to pay the bills. You have to interact with family and friends. You have to do all of these things. All of that takes up brain space. Okay. So that really does not leave you much space to learn all this additional data. So if you have limited space as you're learning how to get rid of all of those old belief systems and incorporating new, since you know that you've got limited space, is it better to try to figure out how you got here or is it better to figure out how to do right here better so that you can get to 5D? You can choose. If you go back and you try to figure out what got you here, what got humans here, how they're in this mess, you risk just repeating the same thing that has happened before. Because concentrating on what has been is what keeps humans doing the same thing over and over and over. So I suggest not that you can't be here, not that you can't interact, but by going back in time or by focusing on the negative stuff, you risk not doing it objectively, but doing it subjectively in the middle of it, vibrating at that rate and recreating similar uh, events to reoccur. Okay? So what I'm going to ask you to do is try not to do that. Later on, in down the road, once you've got the hang of this and you are on top of your feelings at all time. You can correct them with any kind of trigger at any time and very quickly go back to happier. When you're at that place and you have some curiosity about the history of the planet, that's when uh, we'll go into it, okay? Because it is fun, it is interesting, but let's get this other down first. Let's make sure that you're walking through things well first, okay? Now we've also got to talk about your physical body being happier and happier. Now for me, this is the trickiest. As you know, I don't do physicality. It is not my strength and I'm forever forgetting about her. You have to understand that this body is a part of Gaia and the entity that you are, you inhabit this av avatar. And this avatar does have a form of consciousness. That form of consciousness is very unique. It's a unique form of consciousness in this human body. The human body is capable of breathing, eating, walking around, and looking completely normal if you were to suddenly just become like entity comatose. Um, it, could, it could successfully pull that off and appear normal. It knows how to go through the actions. Kind of very good robot-ish. Okay, your physical human body's main focus is to stay alive and not get hurt. Okay, so 
Uh, it does definitely feel love, so you need to love and care for this human body. You need to listen to it. Inca. She went, Choom! it scared me. <laughs> it startled me. It scared me. You need to listen to your human body. It can absolutely heal itself if given the right fuel. Okay? And the right belief system. So if you will listen to it, it will heal itself. It will take care of itself. But frequently, um, star seeds don't do that. <laughs> we just don't do that. We, we don't do physical human body as well because we've not been here before or we star seeds have been here very few human lives like i said being a human takes a lot of practice and that includes running this human body so i want you to be aware and considerate of this human body avatar that you're inhabiting take care of it be nice to it love it um it loves you it really does and it will work its hardest for you. It'll do um, everything that you ask it to do, and it'll keep going until it can't go any further. Now, I did talk in one of the videos on YouTube, as I was talking to this guy who had a recent loss, and I don't feel, as an entity, I don't feel any regret or sadness when anyone dies, whether they're close to me or not because I'm very aware of where they've gone. However, it is important that you uh, validify and understand and give credence to your human body self, its loss. Because if it's someone close to you that they interact, that the body interacts with, what they see, they touch, they speak with this other entity, that they're close to, then they're going to feel a sadness. The, the human body consciousness is it's very different. So it, it kind of is closer to what people think animal consciousness is. Animal consciousness is not what people think it is. Animal consciousness and plant consciousness is definitely more enlightened, live in the now, go with the flow, understand that they're still connected to the one and the all it is. The human body has a limited um, consciousness, very connected to the planet Earth, very much feels emotions, and definitely can get caught in an emotional loop. Okay? Um, it definitely goes more on how it feels uh, than your entity would, uh, rather than what it thinks so it's less you're more connected to the human brain and mind than the human body is the human body is more connected to the planet earth uh, because it was made from that substance so the avatar part of you is a very unique form of consciousness absolutely will follow your lead if you step up and uh it is kind of built that you're in charge, okay? So all you've got to do is spend just a little bit of time uh, considering the consciousness of the human body from its standpoint. It does operate with the five senses. Uh, it does operate in the now. But when someone dies, it is going to it is going to mourn. It is going to miss seeing and tactilely touching or interacting with that being, that other human being's body, okay? It knows that that other human being's body is gone, and it will not be able to interact with it anymore. And it will be sad. There will be loss. There will be mourning involved, and you need to allow it to do so. You need to support it in this. And then you could use your brain. It will listen to you and explain that it has gone back to Gaia is not a loss that consciousness has not disappeared it has simply changed forms again and kind of like you as an entity if you wanted to you could go back and merge in with source the human body has merged back in with Gaia that's what has happened that's as above so below type thing okay
That makes sense? So, now that we've covered the human body and being very aware of how it's feeling at any given time, and to be on top of it, listen to what it has to say. It will give you warnings as to what it needs. Listen to it. Try to listen to what it tells you rather than what society tells you about eating, health, all of that stuff. Be open-minded about what this body might need in this transition. Going from lower 3D to lower 5D for this human body is absolutely a trick and a half too. So, and that path will be done very uni uniquely to that particular body. So you need to be aware, and if you're caught up in, in belief systems of what other people are telling you instead of listening to your body, you're going to struggle. Your struggle. Your body is going to struggle and you're going to struggle. So be open to what your body tells you. It will talk to you and it will tell you. It will, it will um, tell you it doesn't want something and it will, tell, it will crave stuff. Okay? You can also use the uh, reflexology thing. Stephanie? Um, what are the reflex things that we learned that you could do by yourself? Yeah, you know, this thing with the finger. Oh. Oh, yeah, you can do by yourself. You can yeah, we can do by yourself. Now, together, what this, Stephanie and I will do. This. All right. What Stephanie and I would do is we would go, like, somewhere, especially to the grocery store. You can ask any kind of question of your body this way. And I, I would say, okay do you want this particular food? And what, what we would do is I would take my thumb and middle finger and put them together like this. And you want to put them together pretty firmly. Not, Arr! but you want them firm. You want to be firm. And then Stephanie would take and pull on both sides like that. And if it came apart, the answer is no. And if it's together, the answer is yes. Now, what we can do by ourselves is we can form that circle, ask the question, and with the other hand, put it in and try to pull through. And if you can pull through, the answer is no. And if you cannot pull through, the answer is yes. And the resistance will give you how much yes or no. And you can get like, well, yes, but this one's even a stronger yes. Or really, really no, and just, well, uh, a little bit no. You can start to learn. It's also a good way to learn feeling that energy flowing through your body. Because when you do that, you can feel the energy going through your hand. Okay? And learning how the energy flows through your body is very, very, very important. Very good for you in this process. So remember, your body, your 3D body is now going all the way through 4D and 5D. So it's making some dramatic changes. And so you're going to feel it. There's going to be a lot of uh, all different kinds of signs and sim sy symptoms. If you stop and really spend a lot of time worrying about these signs and symptoms, uh, well, the first thing I would do is I would do the finger test, and I would find out if this is because of your ascension, as they say. You're raising the vibrations. If it is because of that, then ask your body um, if walking through nature would assist you right now or a long hot bath with, with uh, certain stones or essences in the water, certain flowers, certain teas. Should you drink certain teas? Should you stare at the sun? Ask your body. Come up with all these different things. Should you meditate looking into a flame? Um, start listing a bunch of that kind of stuff that you have available to you. A bathtub, walk in nature, play with your pet, um, different kinds of foods. Um, your body will change and you need to keep up with it. So maybe uh, one of your favorite foods was uh, this food. And now you've got to be really on top of it. You've got to be honest with yourself. So if, if that food starts to not taste good to you anymore, then do the finger test. Ask if that if it's not good anymore. Then, then we'll use hamburger. You love hamburger. Hamburgers. 
You've loved hamburgers since you were a kid. Now all of a sudden you're starting to get heartburn or an upset stomach or it just doesn't taste right. So ask your, uh, we're going to say McDonald's hamburgers. Um, ask your body if, it, if the McDonald's hamburger is causing you trouble. If it is, then you're going to have to reevaluate how you spend your, your money and you're going to have to go ask your body if you need the higher end beef, the grass fed, the no antibiotics meat. If that is true, then you need to go purchase it. I prefer to go to a local farmer. There are always local farmers that you can find. You just have to reach out. You can go to, uh, a lot of times you can go to the uh, city, what are those groups called? So the city, what's this city's, that city group that they know the businesses. Ah, not the better business. Down in this, each individual town has a council. Oh, well, it'll come to me. You know, probably know what I'm talking about anyway. Uh, go to the farmer's markets. Even if they don't have somebody who is selling meat, they if you just talk to them, they probably know a rancher that is selling meat. And then you can know exactly where your meat is coming from, exactly how it's being treated. Almost all of them will let you come out and look at how they, how the animals are are caged and how they're treated and you can feel how that farmer feels about his uh, his job and his property. At this point if you've got somebody that's farming uh, they probably love it because it's very difficult for them to make any money at this point. So they have to really uh, love their <coughs> love their their job. Mm -mm. Paul, next door neighbors coming home, so they're uh, letting us know in our alarm system. Okay, so you have to be on top of also what your physical body is doing and changing. Okay, now at the same time, you got to sweep that brain out, and you have to be open to new things from your spiritual side. That's how you're going to remember, and you're going to start to remember. The more you believe that these things will happen, the faster they will happen. Things like um, the no fear means that there's no more things like um, uh, uh, really homeless and uh, disease and um, war, uh, all, all of that kind of stuff. That stuff's all going to go away. Now, in the process of that, there will be a lot of entities that are in the process of wanting to experience 3D and 4D. So in this process, what you will see is you might see uh, a lot of killings, a lot of deaths. That's because those entities don't want to go to a higher vibration, nor do they want to be around higher vibrational beings because they're in the process of experiencing the lower vibrations. Now, in order to become a long-term human or experience it from that level, this takes millions of lifetimes. Okay, guys? Millions and millions of lifetimes. These entities want to experience this 3D, 4D experience. Okay? In order to do that, that's what they do. They set up millions of lifetimes. Now, if they're here and they're in the middle of creating and going to that space, they don't want to be interfered with with that. So they really don't want to be around beings that are raising their vibration because it'll throw off what they're working to do to go down. Does that make sense? So that's why they will bite so hard. So we're kind of passing in the night. So as you get better and you're on a planet that you see has less and less sorrow, suffering, despair, and fear, then those, those are higher vibrations. You look around and you, your neighbors are laughing and they're not fighting. Uh, there's more news where good things are happening. This is very subtle. But if you grab hold of that positivity, then that will take you to timelines where there's even more. And there's even more. If you look around and all you can see is the death and destruction and the bad stuff, then that will keep you on timelines where the bad stuff will continue to occur. 
So the trick here is to not pay any attention to their games because they're going somewhere else. You don't want them interfering with what you're doing. They don't want you interfering with what they're doing. Uh, it, it is incredibly difficult to do what they're doing. So I don't blame them. I, I don't blame them if, if you really step in and start to interfere, which of course would not be allowed. But let's say you did, it might cost them, you know what, a thousand lifetimes to re to get back to the place where they are right now because you interfered with your really high vibration, right? Now, of course, that would not happen because um, the way the law of attraction uh, mechanism is in place is it wouldn't be allowed, but you, you can step into it momentarily. And I'm sure most of you have tried that and gotten burned pretty bad. I've done it a lot and got burned a lot. So I know it's very, very, very accurate and very true. Okay, so in this process of going to 5D where there are no really low vibrations, in lower 5D, you still have duality. You still have lower emotions. As long as you're in duality, you will have lower emotions and higher emotions, which you consider good and bad. But the difference in the good and the bad is substantially different. Okay, so instead of in lower 3D there being deep, dark despair, uh, deep, intense hatred. The low end of lower 5D is sadness. It might be, um, I would say the lowest one is, it's just sadness. It's just, I'm sad. Okay? That's the lowest end of 5D. That's And, and, and then that will go up too, and that will eventually be, well, just a little bit sad. And then... Uh, just I prefer and in the mid range of 5d that's really what we have most of is I prefer this over this that's really what it comes down to is a personal preference now 5d is also on earth 5d is um, very big because at mid range and above 5d you could step outside of time space of course you have access to everything else in 5d so, depending upon where you are, 5D is very big, just like 3D was, okay? And 4D, even bigger. 5D goes down. It's not as big as 4D as you think of it, but the options are just as many, okay? So, to get to that space in 5D, then, like I've told you before, everything has to change. And the biggest thing that you've got to do is no judgment, no attachment. No judgment, and no attachment. And no judgment and no attachment means no judgment and no attachment to anything. Anything. That means you're not attached to your job, your family, your past, your pain, your money, your animal, That and no judgment about where you've been and what you've done or what anyone else is doing or what the animals are doing or how you get there. Okay, these two things are very, very important to get to 5D. They're imperative to get to 5D. Now, you will technically, of course, still have some judgment if you're saying, I prefer this over this. But it's a judgment based on an understanding that they're simply a, at this point, is the judgment is like this. Um, uh, you look at somebody over there, and they're struggling and you look at them and maybe you have this strong desire to go help them fine you go over there and you offer your hand you offer help and they basically tell you to go away now it's at that point right there that you cannot judge their response you cannot have an attachment or a need for them to respond nicely to you You've got to have no expectations at all. You've got to simply say, well, I, as a creator God, have chosen to be a creator God that reaches out to help people who look like they're in distress. But if they um, take my help or if they don't take my help, if it helps them to go in a better direction from my perspective or not, is none of my business. It is my choice to go over there and offer the help or to extend the help. But how they respond to it 
is absolutely their choice, their right. And it's none of my business how they respond to it, how they take it, how they use it. I give it unconditionally. And you've got to understand that in order to get to 5D, you must do that. And a lot of people think that they do, but they don't. They'll go offer um, help. The help is taken, and then the person doesn't say thank you. They don't reciprocate. They don't give credit. And the person who gave the help gets their feelings hurt. And they think they're a doormat. That is being attached. You've got to, if you're going to give the help, you've got to just back off and say, okay, if you hand the the homeless person five bucks and you see them walking over to the liquor store, you can't be upset about it. It's none of your business. The only thing that you could control is you decided to give help. You decided to give help to that person. What that person does with your help, you cannot be concerned about. Uh, when you get high enough, you will smile even if he's going to the liquor store and say, I'm glad I helped him on his path of experiencing probably being an alcoholic. I, I'm glad that I could facilitate and be a part of his creation when you're high enough. That's what you will do. If you can't do that, then just don't look. Just don't look. And understand that the ultimate way for you to get through this is you don't need anybody's... Um, you don't need them to be grateful to you. You don't need them. You won't need people because what you're doing is you're developing the remembering of the true God that you are. And a true God doesn't need anything, right? That's what we're working towards. We're working towards you remembering that you're a true God and you don't need anything. You don't need anything. So all of those belief systems of all of those needs that you've been taught that you have, you have to teach yourself, un unteach yourself though, that. Because in truth, um, even stuff like breathing is a part of the game. You don't need to breathe. You don't need to eat. You don't need uh, to be loved. You don't need um, anything. You, you don't need it. Now you've forgotten that because once you remember then, of course, you're tied to source. You're connected to the all that is and everyone. You feel that you, you know that you are unconditionally loved on a stupendous level all the time. It's not based on where you are, who you are, or what you're doing. You don't have to go look for it. You don't have to develop it. You don't have to keep it going by doing something. It is always, always with you. It is always, always there. You are always unconditionally loved on a magnificent level without you doing anything at all to earn, deserve, or keep it. And that's what you're going to get back to understanding and believing. But as long as you are looking for love somewhere else, right, you will not be able to allow in the memory, the knowingness, and then the feeling of that all conditional love that is with you always. Okay? You got to clear out the space to allow the new one in. And that's true with all of this stuff. All right? And when you're walking through as a human, you really, really have to understand that you are an entity playing a game. You, everybody is taking this way too seriously. So you've got to repeat to yourself over and over again. This is just a game. This is just a game. I am a God in a human body. I'm just playing a game. And when you look at it through those eyes and really get the hang of it, then things like um, animals and children being tortured, uh, isn't. It, you, it, there's relief in that. There's relief in that. When you truly understand and believe that every single thing Light, everything, every being, well, in the first place, everything is a part of the all that is. Everything has consciousness, and everything is playing the role that they're playing 
on purpose because they wanted to do it. Whether it is a microbe or it is a planet or a galaxy, they know what they're doing. They set this up on purpose. It is, uh, they knew exactly what they were getting into, as did you. You knew exactly how this was going to play out. You knew exactly how this was going to work. Okay? Truly. So, in order to be happier and happier and get to 5D, you need to re repeatedly remind yourself that these entities on this planet around you are playing a game. They are playing a very, very intense, a very realistic game. A very realistic game. But nonetheless, it is still a game. Right? It is still a game. It is still a game. <laughs> I want y'all to remember that. Now, in the process of this 4D to 5D, like I told you, there will be entities that are on their way. They are going through those millions of lifetimes to get to the lower 3D that you came out of because they want to have that experience now. Like I said, planet Earth is coming, she'll be in 5D. So they'll be going to different planets that are already set up that are 3D. They'll go to different planets, but they may be in that process. So in this process of getting to 5D, you may see, you probably will see death and destruction. So when you hear all of this, um, conspiracy stuff that 95 the Illuminati want to kill 95% of the humans well if somebody is in 4d wanting to go to 3d worrying about that kind of end of world scenario would put them in intense lower 3d fear wouldn't it and that's where they want to go that is where they want to create so if that's what they want to do, and there very likely could be some kind of big event where a bunch of people died that are going to the lower 3D vibrations, where they'll die then and then be reborn on one of these 3D planets. So it is a part of the game. You don't need to pay any attention to that. Whatever, whatever's going on on planet with these other entities, you have no way of knowing what their particular game is. You have no way of knowing that. And that's why judging somebody else is so impossible. And you need to understand that you've got to stop doing it because you can't possibly understand what they're doing. In the first place, they're most likely in severe amnesia, which means most of what they're doing is being kind of overseen by a, by a higher self. And as you know, there are layers of higher selves. Big picture wise, nothing can go wrong ever, ever. Nothing could ever go wrong. Whatever is happening around you is exactly as planned on some level or another. Even the fact that human beings ended up on this loop, not being able to get off of it on the highest level be outside of time space that was known ahead of time. That is the reason why we are called in now from a lower perspective, lower perspective, where it was an experimentation, taking humans to the lower vibrations. It was a surprise, but from a higher perspective, it was planned, kind of like a child's birthday party. Little little six-year-old child has a birthday party. Mom and dad bring in a clown. Whoa, what a surprise to the child. But from a higher perspective, it was all planned. It's not a surprise to the parents. Okay, does that analogy help at all? So here we are. We are paying attention to our feelings walking from moment to moment, being on top of it, moment to moment, staying in the now, trying to avoid going back to the past. Okay. Now, we also are aware that even from the moment we are born, we create what we experience. It is up to you. Your whole life has been your creation, your creation. No one else has done this to you. None of it, even when you were a baby, 
Even though humans look at babies and they think that they're not powerful, they are. They still vibrate. And frequently, frequently, um, good things happen to babies. They're cuddled, they're loved, they're people go, ooh, ah, ooh, most of the time. The creation happens from the very, very beginning. Very, very beginning. And pre-beginning, whenever somebody was deciding where they were going to be born and with who, to set up the vibration of the life that they wanted to live, to have the experience that they wanted to live, all of the pre-setup was you too. And then you came into body and all of the creation has been you. There is no reason, in my opinion, to forgive anyone. Ever. What is there to forgive? Once you understand that you are the creator of everything that's happened, good and bad, good and bad, then what is there to forgive? Forgive implies to me that they've done something wrong that you need to forget about. But they haven't done anything wrong. They've done exactly what you created. Whether you consciously created it or not, you still created it. It was the, that's the only way it can happen. Only you can create your experience. You will go to timelines and be surrounded by people doing the things to or for you based on your vibration, which is your creation, and it can only stem from you. You are the only one that can take you to 5D. The only one. Now, these other entities can take you to what they call 5D, but it is a, it is not my 5D. Nobody can take you to 5D but you. There's no angel or other god that can come down and and uh, zap you into 5D. Nope, can't happen. 5D in this creation has to be done by the individual person. And you've heard that from the New Agers, that this time we are the saviors of ourselves. We are the ones that do it. There is no outdoor savior, and that is very true. Very, very true. You are the savior of yourself getting to 5D. Okay? So you've got to have non-judgment about you and everybody else. You've got to not be attached to anything or anyone. And you have to totally 100% believe and understand that your life has been created by you. That if you have been in a timelines where the world sucks, <laughs> then that was you doing it. You are the one that went, took yourself to the timelines where the earth sucks. You vibrated in such a way that you went to those timelines with a collective consciousness creating a sucky world. Okay? Now, all of those entities agreed to that just like you did. So everybody in that sucky world wanted to experience that sucky world, okay? Now, more than likely as a star seed, uh, you were in this sucky world to experience it for a reason. From a bigger perspective, you did that all on purpose. Everybody does. Everybody does. But now you're listening to me, so you know that you can consciously create. Most of that kind of stuff, previous life, if you're in a sucky environment, was done because you were not consciously creating. Well, now that you know that every you can go to whatever timeline you want, whatever option that you want, you have to walk your way over. You can't jump. You can't just jump over to uh, bubbles and rainbows. You have to walk yourself over. How fast you walk yourself over is uh, the trick. And the trick of walking yourself over to bubbles and rainbows and wonderful 5D is being a little bit happier right now than you were a second ago, not judging anything about anything. I mean, and I mean judgment, you know, like, I don't mean, okay, should I have a glass of tea or not? So let's not get caught up in that kind of semantics, okay? Because that's just silly. So you don't judge and... Uh, you can't be attached to anything. You can't be attached to anything. Those are the things that you're going to do to get to 5D. But you've got to accept the fact that if you're in a shitty place, you're the one that did it. 
Nobody else's fault. Nobody else's fault. There is no need to forgive anybody. If you forgive somebody, that implies that they did something wrong. They didn't do anything wrong. You went to the timeline. They were a part of the collective consciousness around you that you are vibrating and went to. It's what you called. It's what you asked for, consciously or not. Okay? Now, there's no judgment to that. You can simply go at this time, and you guys know my history. If you don't, I am going to do a long video on, on my trauma. Um, I get down to it pretty darkly and specifically. I'm going to go down to it in detail so that y'all truly understand. But I, with all of the trauma that I've had, do not blame anyone in, whoop, do not blame anybody else for that trauma. And it started when I was an infant. I don't, I don't hate my parents at all. I don't want to hang out with them. You know, the people that were involved in the trauma, I don't want to be involved with them now because, well, now I'm aware. Now I vibrate differently. So I don't vibrate the same as what I could around people who are playing the game where they are that kind of people. Okay? So no harm, no foul. If they want to play... Um, in that vibratory range where they are either a victim or they're a victimizer, then that's fine. That's none of my business. I want you all to understand something here is when you're dead and you step outside of physicality and you step outside of this game and you're looking back at what has been created, this creation, you will look at it from a vibrational standpoint outside of body. Everything will look, it looks through vibration. And you can see this, what would look to you like a kaleidoscope, okay? A kaleidoscope of so many different colors and designs and movements. And it's so fast. Um, this is just an, the closest way that I could explain it. It's much more complex than that because you're also getting all the feelings, emotions, and ideas in the same thing. But this is what kind of a really good example that when you die and come out of this, turn around and look at it. The, what you see, what you will see, even though you don't have eyes, so you're not going to see, but what you see is so intricate, so intense, so remarkably, stupendously beautiful. It is deep and wonderful. This creation, this game, and this going, this humans going to the low levels of 3D, when it's done and you come out and you look at it, it has created something new to the whole, the all that is, that is unlike anything that's ever been done before. Because of the contrast. The contrast has made it intensely beautiful. So even though the creation of it included pain from a human body standpoint, when you pull out of it and look at it from a different perspective, it is created because of that contrast something that is absolutely unbelievable, unbelievably beautiful, okay? And you'll see that someday. I promise you, you will. But back to the point. So when you're figuring out that you can't be judgmental, you can't be attached to anything, you've got to be a little bit happier every day and that everything ever in your life has been created by you that it has been guided by your vibration. Your vibration, you can tell what you're vibrating at by how you're feeling. And you have agreed to it when you came here. You reacted to what happened to you from the moment that you were born and created and went to different collective consciousnesses along the way that you are the one that went to them, okay? Yeah, it was your decision. Nobody did anything to you. So you can't blame anybody else. There is nobody to forgive. There's no need to forgive anyone. No need. And you did this for a reason. So I want you to understand that you did not put yourself through any of this for no reason. You did it for a reason. You really, really did it for a reason. I did what I did for a reason. And we'll go into that more whenever I go into the trauma video a lot more. Does that make sense? All right, guys. Um, you know, 
think this has got a lot of good data on it. So I think I'm going to put this up on YouTube and on the website. But on the website over with the members, would you please in, um, ask me any questions that you have regarding this, um, this video? Uh, and let's get into some conversation about you and your life and how I can help you uh, be happier and happier. How I can help you deal with the fact of your past and your present that you were the one that, that created it so that you can really be firmly in an understanding of that and can move forward with that knowledge comfortably. Uh, once I stepped through that door and understood it fully, it was... I was I felt free for the first time in my life truly free because maybe it sucks that I'm the one that created all that horrible stuff in my life before but now that I accept that now I'm in charge I am free I can do it now it's just a matter of practice that's all this is now I've just got to practice how to do it how to get to 5d it's just practice until I get it right obviously what I did before was wrong so I know how not to do it so now it's just a way of now it's just a matter of practicing over and over and over, which is the reason why I say, keep it up, be happier and happier. If you're happier and happier and happier, I guarantee you'll get there. I guarantee you'll get there. That's all you got to do is just be a little bit happier in this moment than you were the last. If you do that, concentrate on that and do nothing else. I promise you, you get you will eventually get to five D. I absolutely promise you that. But usually people need more which is the reason why I'm doing these videos. So over uh, members, please uh, talk to me, talk to each other, and let's get some dialogue going regarding this video. What you say? Okay, let me help you through this. All right, because this is the first part. It is the major part. If you can't um, start with an understanding of these things that I've just gone over, both with the physical body, but mostly with the entity that you are. If you can't uh, begin to understand, and that's all you've got to do, guys, just begin to understand these things, that in order to get to 5D, you cannot be judgmental. You know that you're judgmental. We all are. Now it's just a matter of practicing not doing it anymore. How long that takes is up to you, and how long it takes is how long it takes. You've got to be... You've got to lose the attachment to things. We're all attached to things. It just takes practice. How long it takes is up to you. And it's totally up to you. And how long it takes is how long it takes. So what? So what? So what? Understanding that everything that's happened to you has been your creation. And there's no one to forgive. There's no one to be mad at. Okay? You, you've spent a lifetime... Uh, um, Everybody has blaming other people for things that they've done that were mean to you. I'm going to I'm going to tell you to stop doing that. It just takes practice. That's all it takes. Just practice. One moment after one moment after one moment as these things come up and you look at them and you go, "Nope. Mm -mm. I'm creating this from now on. That doesn't matter anymore. I don't care about that. I'm going to be happier." That whole, do you want to be happy or do you want to be right? When, when it comes to other people, uh, keep that in your mind too. Don't argue with other people. Would you rather be happy or you want to be right? Just let them be right and walk away. It's not worth the fight. It's not worth the fight at all. Okay? So as you walk through these things, let's have conversations about how you run into these things. What are your struggles? Where are, your, where are you really slowing down? as you practice, practice, practice these things to get to 5D. Okay? Alrighty then. So, uh, yeah, this has been a long one, and uh, I hope it makes sense to you. I hope you're there with me. Uh, yeah, I guess that's it. I am a little bit tired, so it's the end of the day. It's been a beautiful day today, but it is the end of the day. So I'm going to call it a night. So uh, huge hugs out to everybody. I love you so much, and I'll talk to you later. Bye now.